Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome back to another episode of my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough uh, with the Austin P. Governors. Last episode, we were getting through that uh, non-conference schedule, a pretty tough loss at Mississippi State. Um, this episode, we're going to get started on the conference play. We've finished the non-conference schedule. I've actually played the first game of the season in conference, uh, but I was saving what I think is probably going to be a... a one of the best early matchups for today. We'll play that in game. I'll probably go through a few other things to give you a look at uh, how the team's doing and just some things I'm kind of discovering as I get deeper into this game. Uh, but first thing first, I, I just want to look at how the team's doing. Um, our record overall is 9-3, and three, so that tells you right away we're doing way better than I thought we would be. I mentioned uh, in a couple of previous episodes with 11 games in that non-conference schedule, I was really hoping, in terms of my goal, I was just hoping for six wins, that we would finish with a winning record, and uh, we exceeded that. So we beat pretty much every team we should have beat except one, that big uh, Monmouth game on the road. That was an upset, but we also beat some teams that were, were kind of toss-ups. Uh, I mentioned South Florida in the last episode. That was a really one of the better games, if not the best game so far. Uh, we won in overtime 92-90 to 90 on the road. But even after that Mississippi State game, we came back against Charlotte. Our scout had Charlotte the favorite in that one, and even though it was at home. And uh, we beat them 76-70. to 70. Uh, Handled Toledo really easily on the road. Beat Coppin State at home. And then a, a pretty big game, a big win on the road against uh, – Fresno State, uh, 75 to 62. So a big game there from uh, Martin, 21 points. The only hiccup outside of uh, Monmouth and Mississippi State was that Memphis Tigers game, and that was the the last um, game before we got started into the conference play. And I honestly, I expected we would lose. I mean, this is a you know they're in what the American uh, American Conference now. Uh, let me see what they're in. Yeah, they're in that American Athletic Conference with uh, Houston and Connecticut and Cincinnati and South Florida. You know, uh, a, bit, a little bit of a upgraded conference-wise over the OVC. But it's disappointing to me, though, that we, we really weren't in the game um, at all. There was only one lead change. That was because I think we scored early. I may have been the first team to score they went up at one point twenty to six, twenty to four, something like that early on, and we just never were in this game uh, from that point on. They they cruised to a win, uh, handled handled this really in, in both halves, and uh, I don't even think we were under ten points often in that game. Um, but after that one, um, we jumped into the conference play and the first game on the road against Tennessee Martin. Pretty close game, but we, we managed to win at 72 67. 67. Uh, some balanced scoring on the team. Anderson, Gray, Grawer, Martin, each uh, double figures and point, well, rushing as well, double figures and points. So a good early win now against this uh, Tennessee State game. I, uh, I think we're going to have a tough time beating them. Our scout has it exactly 50 50. And I don't know if I've shown this before, but this is the scouting reports that uh, our uh, assistant coach who's in charge of scouting, he will go out and look at the upcoming matchups, and you'll get a report something like this where they give you kind of the uh, best player of the opposing team, <clears throat> their offensive, defensive styles, and then how you match up by position. And we have uh, a little bit of an an advantage in point guard, they're saying, but that's it. Uh, it's pretty much a toss-up between bench and the, and the rest of the lineup. So this could be, you know, it could be a loss. I hope we we manage to win because we're at home. You know, that's the biggest thing. But that's what we're going to play today, and uh, we'll see how we, we go. I think if we don't win that one, then it's probably a good sign that we're going to struggle to finish the top three in the conference, which, which is – what our goals are based from the board and athletic director. I also wanted to make sure you're aware. Uh, I said earlier that, you know, these 
this dashboard, it'll pick up and show you your uh, scoring leaders, passing leaders, rebound leaders, give you some matchup stats in your, of your upcoming games, um, as well as the win percentage chance here. I don't know if this is customizable. Uh, it might be cool if you could customize, you know, like out of the park baseball, for instance, they have all these widgets you can customize. Uh, I, I might look into that if you guys are interested, but I don't, as far as I know, I don't think you can customize it. But one thing it does have here is a player impact estimate pie chart. And um, I feel like it's probably going based on the efficiency rating, which kind of takes an offense and defensive stats and gives you an idea of who your best performers are on the team. Um, first, First performer, uh, not that big of a surprise, Ben Martin. He's leading the team in scoring, 13.5. Uh, second in assists, uh, having a good overall season. But Marty Anderson, my center, I'm, I'm really surprised by him. Um, he's third in scoring, first in rebounding. Uh, maybe that's where it's coming from, but... I told you going in, I thought center was probably our weakest position in that lineup and really in the bench as well. But these two guys have kind of exceeded my expectations so far. Uh, I hope that stays the case for the rest of the season. Uh, but I'm going to take a look, too, at, at just looking at the stats overall. And you look at scoring Milton Grower. He's picked it up a little bit. Uh, I still would like to see more assists from him. I'd like to see a better indication that he's a good point guard he's able to you know be that kind of floor general you need uh, but Ben Martin uh, let me see where he's at Anderson those are the only three players with uh, a points per game total above 10 so uh, there's two ways of course you can look at that one you can say well we're winning so that you know that's showing the depth and the balance of our team but on the flip side, you know, I, I don't know if we have the kind of player that's going to take charge and take control of a game when we need it. I don't know if we have that kind of impact player on this team. So that's that's worrying me a little bit. I would like to start seeing some better performances out of Lewis Rushing, for instance. He's a, he's a, st a senior starter at Power Forward, just 7.8 points a game. And uh, I think rebounding might be decent, but you kind of expect him – being in that forward position there, power forward, to get um, to get some pretty decent rebound totals. He's a four-star potential player, so he's one of the best players on the team. He's really balanced uh, for the most part. He's not he's not rated too highly in free throw shooting or scoring though. Uh, but I was hoping that I would get a little bit better play out of him. Um, another another one that's worried me on the uh, of course. I think Martin is a shooting guard. Is that right? Yeah, he's shooting guard. So I'm getting good play there. And uh, from Samuel and Martin, those two guys are seniors. That's why I've been kind of scrambling, trying to get um, a, a good replacement for them in, in recruiting. But small forward, I, I got three guys here, uh, two who, you know, could potentially be starters. Mark Marshak is probably going to be, he's a sophomore, he's probably going to have a good chance to start next year. But he hasn't looked that great in the in, in the games that I've seen him. I mean, he's getting, he's averaging over 10 minutes a game, but just 4.3 points, uh, not many rebounds, steals, really anemic there from that perspective. And then same with uh, Jepson, who a three-star current potential, uh, Current, currently rated with a three and a half star potential, he's not scoring that much either. He is uh, contributing with you know some other stats here, assists and rebounds and blocks. So he's maybe a little bit more of a complete player than um, than Jepson that I was looking at, but uh, or not Jepson. I'm sorry. Um, the uh, rushing those power forwards I was looking at, but. Even Greg Edwards, I mean, I might have to start playing him more because I need I need a little bit better play, I think, out of the uh, the forwards on the team. But one of the things that I've been trying to focus on and, and trying to pick up some uh, focus on anyway is there's a lot of uh, stats 
available in, in this uh, game. And, and, of course, if you like sports management sims, you like stats. Uh, I didn't even realize some of the stats that were available. This is actually just the first of four pages that you can go through. And you can get really deep in terms of, um, like, these net percentages, you know. Uh, I think that gives you a pretty good indication of who your best players are on the team. Um, and probably falls in line a little bit with that impact rating that I showed you earlier, that impact pie, pie chart. Um, but one of the things, too, I'm I'm looking at is, like, the strategies that we're playing with. And base, basketball is not my um, – it's not the strongest sport in terms of my knowledge of it. And so one of the things I'm liking about playing this game is um, I feel like I'm picking up some knowledge already about basketball that I wasn't aware of. But when you go to the strategy screen, it, it kind of shows you your offensive and defensive sets, your offensive man-to-man -man offensive sets. And the way it's rated right now, we're going pretty much with a flex offense for the most part, um, two-thirds of the time, really. And, and we're throwing in a couple other offenses here that um, I guess based on percentages, this is how often they're going to be used in the game. But one of the things that I'm looking at, it gives you this pull – this um, pull-down menu here gives you a, a description of each of these different type of offenses. So it may be uh, like two, three sentences to tell you what they're about. And so if I take a look at the flex offense, one of the things it says that's key is that you need all five players have to be good ball handlers and passers. And the problem I'm having with this team is we don't have good ball handlers and passers, certainly not on all, all five positions. Even our point guard, I was telling you earlier, Grower, he's for a point guard, he's still not rated as high as I'd like to see. And then you have guys, some of those forwards in the center, for sure, who are rated really low uh, in terms of ball handling and passing. <clears throat> so I think the flex offense is probably not the offense we need to be using based on the team that we have. And what I'm doing taking this knowledge, I'm going over to the practice plan and I'm starting to incorporate a little bit more uh, practice time to some other offenses. I'm starting off with motion right now, just 5%, but I'm hoping if this is the way it works, and if it is, then kudos to the developers because it, it's going to really add to the immersion, of, of course, if you're able to <clears throat> change your strategy and change some of the practice plan information and impact the actual games and the actual performances of your players. So what I'm hoping for is this will, in time, uh, work the way I that I, I'm hoping anyway. But I'm putting some time to motion because I think with motion, going back to the strategy, um, motion I think fits this team a little bit better because with motion, <clears throat> you got movement without the ball. And it keeps the primary post players around the lanes, uh, which I feel like that's you know where our scoring is coming from. And, and to just add to that, another good thing about this uh, game stats-wise and about how it all kind of ties together, I can take a guy like Ben Martin, who is my top scorer. If I look at his player stats, um, I have to make sure it's a regular season. But it gives you this, this, um, this chart, graph, di or diagram, however you want to term it, that shows you where he's, he's scoring. And you can see... From the corners, he's, he's not that great. But when he posts up inside that perimeter, in these lanes here inside, that's where his scoring's coming from. And, and a lot of the players, this is going to be true for. Uh, Jepson, starting forward, for instance, same way for the most part. His scoring is going to come inside, inside the perimeter. He's a weak outside shooter, especially from the corners. Um, Who's the other guy I need to look at? Rushing, uh, who's my starter. Same deal. He's scoring in most all of his scoring is coming inside and in, in the lanes and he, when they're posting up, I guess. So I'm hoping to incorporate that more into the, the game strategy as we go along. <clears throat> it's one of those things, if you if you watched any of my out-of-the-park baseball playthroughs, you'll, you'll kind of see my style. I'm pretty conservative. But, you know, the overall goal is to win. And so when you start out 9-3, and three, I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to tinker with too much. But I do know that 
further down the line, I mean, you know, if I start having injury problems or depth issues or certainly going into next year, I'm, I'm going to have to focus on it more because I'm losing <clears throat> almost all of my starters next year. So I want to at least get a jump on that and figure out, you know, how you manage your strategy based on the team you have. So that's something, <clears throat> excuse me, as we go through the season, that's something I hope to incorporate more into my playthrough. And uh, I'll keep you updated on what I'm seeing, if I'm seeing any kind of difference or any kind of <clears throat> any kind of performance improvement or, or um, uh, worse, hopefully not, but worse performance based on some of the changes I'm making. But other than that, that's all I really wanted to hit. Uh, recruiting I'm not going to go into today, but it's, I wouldn't say it's at a standstill, but man, I'm really struggling. I think I'm going to have a hard time filling out uh, the roster. Definitely going to have a hard time finding five good recruits, which is uh, the amount of scholarships I have to offer. Probably going to wind up, maybe if I get three decent players, I'm probably just going to have to either accept uh, a couple walk-ons to fill out the team or just some, you know, one-star recruits, whoever I'm able to get there towards the end. But let's go ahead and get to this Tennessee State game. We're going to be on, uh, we're going to be at home against them. Um, I'll go ahead and sim the rest of the games and then we'll play ours. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this will jump into the game first and then we'll go back and look at the uh, rest of the day scoring. I've typically been starting out with just the default sets here with a balance play, auto switching on everything until we get a few minutes in and see how we're playing. So <clears throat> off the bat, a couple, what, turnovers already? No, no turnovers, just uh, they score first. It's 2 nothing. Now we hit a big three-pointer there. That was from Grower and turnover on their side. So we're up 3-2 early. A good play there from rushing, drives to the basket. And first foul of the game, that's going to go against uh, rushing. Uh, and they make the first free throw, and miss the second when we get the rebound, but we throw it away. I know that um, I even had a comment on it, that the pace was a little too fast for the game speed. But just know, you know, you can set that as low as you want to go. If you're really... If you're really uh, wanting to focus on the in-game play and making, you know, set plays and, <clears throat> you know, just staying really engaged with that, you can you can go really slow and it's not a big deal. But for me, with these playthroughs, I want to keep it going pretty fast so I, so I can get through an episode relatively uh, short, you know, keep them around 30 minutes or so. So it was deflected out of bounds. We've got the ball, but we're down... Six to five now, back up seven to six, and another foul. They're going to go to the line, miss the first one, miss the second one. We get the rebound, and a foul on the other side. So we're two and two on team fouls early, and we're up nine to six, and a turnover on their side. We get the ball back, but can't do anything with it. Back and forth right now. It is pretty fast paced. Eleven to six. Jepson misses the shot, but draws the foul. We're five for seven in field goals early. Uh, this will be our first time to the line. He makes the first one, misses the second one. We're up 12 to six. And like I say, I'm just staying with that balanced uh, option on the offense right now <clears throat> until we get into trouble. Uh, still 12 to six, kick ball. They're going to keep possession. Oh, a big three pointer from them. 12 9. Rushing throws it away. And we've got some uh, subs coming off, off the bench right now. A turnover. We're uh, four turnovers to their two. And uh, no, they're to their six. So we're leading the turnover batter, battle. But a, a foul is going to take them to the line. And they've got it down to one point difference right now. <clears throat> a foul on, on them. Just their fourth team foul. And, man, can't make it. We're 5 for 11 now in shooting, so our shooting has gotten cold, and they're up 13 to 12, now 13 14. Good drive there. Turnover travel, so we get the ball back. Score again, we're back up by three. Oh, another turnover. Fast pace now, 18 to 13. 
18 to 15. Rebounds is going to them so far, 8 to 5. Oh man, this is a three pointer. And we get the ball back. Still misses. Oh, a good move there from uh, 40 Holland back up center. And Edwards called for the foul, fourth team foul. Just under 10 minutes left now. Another foul, this time on Jepson. But they can't convert. We do on the other side, a three from Grower. He has six points. I think both of them three pointers. Is that right? And Martin misses the shot, draws the foul. Six point game. And Martin struggling so far. No, he's not. I'm sorry. He's six points. Uh, but he hits both free throws. We're up by eight. And they miss the, the dunk there. We get the ball back. And up by 10. Biggest lead of the game, I think. Turnover there. But we can't convert. They miss the three pointer. And we throw it away. They're two for eight and three pointers. We are two for six. So neither one of us really making a lot of those. Rushing called for a foul, his second, but uh, 16 foul. We're about to get in trouble there, and that's what that's what happens. I'm gonna work the referees. Boy, that's crazy. Two fouls on the same possession, and he makes both. It's a 10 point game, and we're getting a little cold now. Um, They could get within, uh, get it under 10 anyway, and they do. Three pointer, their third of the game, and we're just not able to hit on the other side. Five point game again. I think we might need to stop making those three points. Well, he just hit one, so we're up by eight. It's like, well, maybe we need to stop shooting the threes. And that's two threes in a row from us. So, eight point game again. We get the ball back. Three minutes left. We score up by 11, up by 13, biggest lead of the game. And fast pace. We're doing a good job with offense here. They, uh, they're they called for their 16 foul. And we turn it over. Four turnovers for us, but uh, eight steals to their two. That's pretty good. But Jepson is third foul. He's in foul trouble. And we're going to need him, I think, second half the way he's playing today. They make... Uh, one of two on oh, another three-pointer on the other side. We're six for 11 in three-pointers. Probably the best I've seen to shoot three-pointers in a while. It's a 13-point game, under a minute left in the half. Another foul, Greg Lewis. I just can't believe um, how many fouls I'm seeing. They miss but get the rebound. And a foul on Frank Orr. That'll send us to the, to the line. That's our seventh, uh, but we can't hit. And... Palmer makes the shot, draws the foul, and he converts, so it's now an eight-point game. And we hit the three at, right at the buzzer. That was Martin, I think. Um, good half of, of basketball so far, 50-39. to 39. Grower really turning it on, having a great uh, game so far. 14 points, he leads all scoring. Um Jepson is looking pretty good, too. I, I was kind of giving him a hard time before the game, so he needs to pick it up. Same with rushing. Rushing, not a lot of points, but he's given us some rebounds and um, a couple blocks, so he's played some good defense. And then for the bench, uh, Marshak, 10 minutes so far. That might be because of foul trouble uh, that we see in a lot of play time from him. And... Shooting still pretty high, 58.8% from field goals and three points, three, seven for 12. On the other side, they're shooting good as well, 14 for 25, just not as many attempts. Four for 10 uh, from three-point land. And then free throws, they're struggling a little bit. So that's probably the big, big difference right now. I'm going to keep it balanced since we're, we're seeming to seem to be playing pretty well. They're going to have the ball first uh, first off, and we're going to see a foul right out, out of the gate. And uh, that was going to be Anderson, but it's just his first foul. They hit both free throws. It's a nine-point game. And then we score on the other end. That was uh, rushing, and we're up by 13. So uh, 
That may have been another turnover, another defensive foul. They missed the first one, missed the second one. We get the rebound and draw a foul. Marshak, again, he's in the lineup right now for, uh, because of foul trouble, and he go, scores his 10th point. That might be a career high for him, or season high anyway. Oh, good rebound there from uh, Anderson to put it away. Kick ball, they're going to keep possession. It's a 15-point it's a game. I think that's the biggest lead we've had. Rushing third foul on him. That's going to be the uh, oh, Anderson, the second foul. Come on. So I'm getting a warning. Turnover, and uh, Edwards makes the basket. So we're up, up by 17, but... Five team fouls already, and we're not even five minutes into this half. Luckily, a turnover. We're scoring. We're up by 19. They're not converting. Uh, we're going to probably need a big lead if we start getting into foul trouble. And uh, another turnover for them, 17 in the game to our four, and that's quite. that might be the biggest story of the game. Our defense is just playing really well. Ten steals to their two. Uh, 17 turnovers again to our four. They're out rebounding us, but not by much. Problem is, we keep we keep seeing fouls. Uh, they're just 10 for 18 in, at the free throw line, though. It's an 18 point game. I hadn't seen much from Grower this half either. And that was a big three pointer. I don't know if that that was Marshak, I think, who may have hidden that. Dunkey misses the shot, but draws the foul. 17 fouls already in this half. 17-point um, game. We are really in trouble if if this continues. So Jepson misses the shot, but he gets the the foul, and he misses the first free throw, misses the second one. That's one of those things we're struggling with as a team. And another foul. You cannot tell me this is right. 18 fouls. Um, So if I'm looking at who's got fouls out there now, Marshak, Edwards. Marshak and Edwards are, are bench players, and they've already got two fouls. He misses it, thankfully. But we can't convert. It's a big three-pointer there. It's a 14-point game. I'm going to call 30 seconds when I can. 16-point game. And let's see what happens here. If there's anything I could do to motivate him. Um I'm just going to do the entire team and uh, praise them for now. They're not responding, but uh, I want to settle them down a little bit. Maybe that will help with the, with the fouls we're seeing. I'm not really too high on the defensive intensity, so I don't want to change that out too much. But another foul. It's our ninth foul of the half. Uh, it's a 14-point game, 12 minutes left. I mean, it's going to come down to our bench at this point. Uh, and we are struggling. 12-point game, and it, Milton Grower turns it over. We need to score this possession, and we don't get it. Luckily, they throw it away, and we score finally. 14-point game, under 10 minutes. All right, we, we're, we've gotten four points back, so we're up by 16. Oh, now we're scoring pretty well. 18-point game again. Grower, 16. That was his first points of the half. But on the other side, rushing his fourth foul, so he may be out for the for the next few minutes anyway. Luckily, they only make one to two on the free throws. 15 for 25 on free throws for them. Five for nine for us. Yeah, Marty Anderson draws a foul, so he'll go to the line. Makes the first one, makes the second one. We're 7 for 11 for free throws. One of the things I wish, too, uh, if there's any developers maybe watching this or uh, anyone else associated with the game watching, I haven't seen where you can assign like free throw shooting as a... Uh, I guess a 
practice go or a, an, an area to work on in practice, it would be nice if you can't even do it at the team level that maybe you could assign an individual player like, hey, more time at the free throw line in practice. I mean, I would assume, of course, at this level, I mean, that's usually a given, a, a, a given, right, that you're strong at free throws. But it seems like if you're struggling in that area, I'm not seeing much um, way to improve it in the game. Oh, big three-pointer there. Uh, that may have been Samuel. And we're 14 points, but we have a turnover. I'm going to start using a stall offense. It may be a little too early, but I want to get some time off the clock. And looks like we drew a foul. And Marshak makes the first one, makes the second one a 16-point game again. Three and a half minutes left. Deflected out of bounds, and they're going to keep possession. Uh, we get the ball back, though. Oh, and a big three-pointer there from Grower. He's up to 19 points. He may still turn out to be the player of the game here, based on his numbers. Seven assists, which I'm more happy with about that than the point totals. And deflected out of bounds, so they're going to keep possession, but we're at two minutes left. It's uh, getting pretty dicey for them. They may start fouling here, but I'm not sure. They've got a few fouls to give, so I would think they would do that, but... At this point, we're up by 19. It's probably no point. 17-point game, 39 minutes uh, pass deflected out of bounds. So we keep possession. And that's how it's no shot clock violation. Okay, 17 seconds left. So they hit a three, and that's going to be how it ends. 73-87, 14-point win. Really good job. Um, better than I expected, for sure. So, we'll take a look at how the uh, individual stats looked. Crower did wind up being player of the game. This was easily his best game of the season, I think. Um, 7 for 13, field goal shooting, but 5 for 11, three-point um, distance. Eight assists, couple steals, uh, plus 18, plus or minus. Anderson also had a good game. Um, he had just six points, but seven rebounds, uh, five steals. Great defensive performance from him. Rushing was cold from the field and got in, into some foul trouble. Um, rebounds and things like that. I mean, his defense is, I think, he's a little bit stronger defender than he is a scorer. But Marshak off the bench, 19 minutes, 14 points, really filled in when we needed him. Uh, same with Samuel, nine points in 10 minutes. Ivory got a couple minutes and didn't do anything. He's a guy that I'm probably, he's a freshman point guard. Uh, I, I'm trying to give him some game time because I think he may need to be in the mix for next season, but I may have to to rethink that because he has not really performed all that much at all uh, when he gets into the game. But shooting-wise, 25 for 49 for them, over 50%, but just not enough uh, attempts. I mean, we controlled this game defensively. 64 attempts for, for us, hit 34 of them. Uh, big difference there. Free throws, or excuse me, three-pointers, they were 7 for 19. We were 10 for 21. That might have been the best game I've seen from us uh, from three points. And they struggled in the free throws, 16 for 27. Uh, they definitely had the chance to make a game of it in, at the free throw line, but um, thankfully they struggled there. And then in terms of like rebounds, uh, they may have out-rebounded us, but steals, uh, we had 12 to their four. Uh, we had seven blocks. Uh, they had nine, though, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this performance overall. Great job. So now we'll go ahead and look at the... Oh, and Mike Ivory has suffered an injury, so I may that may be a moot point, me worrying about playing him anyway at this point. We'll see how severe that is. But looking at the scores in the OVC, Tennessee State, Austin P. Uh, so we're 2-0 and now in the conference. Eastern Illinois beats, uh, I think that's Southern Illinois uh, University, 77-74, close win. Moorhead State wins over Eastern Kentucky. Jacksonville State over Tennessee Martin, pretty big. Tennessee Tech over Murray State, that's a surprise. Um, 
even though Murray State didn't have a, a great start to the season, they're one of those teams I'm expecting to be competitive in the conference. And big win for Tennessee Tech. And then Belmont easy over Southeast Missouri State. I would think Belmont's probably going to be <clears throat> the favorites to win the conference as it stands. Uh, but here's here's the actual record so far. Three teams at 2-0. and uh, We've got the best overall record, 10-3. and Belmont not far behind. Murray State is struggling. They are two and eleven overall, so maybe they, maybe they're going to have a tougher year than I thought. But that Tennessee State, that was that was a big one for us. Um, looking back at the stats now, so we got Grower up to eleven and a half points a game, four hundred point four assist. Uh, Jepson, Anderson still at ten points. Some of these guys getting close to double digits in points, but Ivory's going to be out for twelve days uh, with back spasms. Just eighty five percent. So I guess you could play him, but I'm probably going to give him a rest. I'll, I'll figure the uh, fix that depth chart, which I, I don't know if I've looked at this too much in previous episodes, but right now I've got him playing four minutes a game. I'll probably move him out of there and might might look at um, either Cunningham more giving him more minutes, or I don't know if there's anybody here I can put in that position, but we'll see. Like Cromer, don't know if he can play a point guard, but I'll look at his stats. Um, passing's pretty good, but uh, ball handling's not that great. So next up, I'll probably look for a good matchup again. Um, I wouldn't mind going this Belmont one. <clears throat> Either that one or Murray State. Um Looking at that next, I'd like to get through the season in maybe three episodes. So, so we'll see how that goes, and then uh, I will come back. I'll probably sim out a few games offline, and then we'll come back for a good matchup next episode. As always, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing. I appreciate the comments and the support, and I will see you next episode.